very clear right now that there is a global sleep loss epidemic. Sleep deprivation um, among American teenagers is an epidemic. About insomnia, which I feel is an absolutely huge problem in America. When teenagers don't get the sleep they need, their brains, their bodies, and behaviors suffer with both immediate and lasting effects. They can't concentrate. Their attention plummets. And many will even show behavioral signs that mimic ADHD. It seems nowadays that everyone is sleep deprived or has some form of insomnia and this isn't only a feeling because about one third of the world has this. One in three humans you see on the streets had some form of trouble with falling asleep. These people turn in their beds every night for hours just like you and never find a clear solution to their problem. They can't understand why this is happening to them and how to fix it. Every pill or supplement they tried just left them addicted to it, without ever trying to fix the root cause. There's a cause, a reason much deeper that is ruining a very important part of our lives. A third of our lives that if not taken care of, will ruin the other two thirds. When looking back 50 years ago, we didn't have such a problem. Teenagers had on average 9 hours and 15 minutes of sleep on school days, which is incomparable with how much teenagers sleep today. So kids that used to be going to bed at maybe 8 or 9 o'clock are now going to bed at 10, 11 or even midnight. The majority are not getting enough shut eye. These children without a set schedule, uh, they may be going to bed at 1, 2 or our modern day addictions pulling us back to our screens over and over again leaving us wondering how much time passed by. Our lifestyles keeping us awake longer and longer and our skyrocketing mental health issues making it impossible to fall asleep. As many know already, having a proper sleep is a non-negotiable for many different factors. Whether we talk about hormones, physical health, mental health or focus, sleep is absolutely necessary. The underslept teens had worse health outcomes, they had larger waistlines, uh, more abdominal fat but they were also heading on a path towards hypertension, high blood pressure. We need sleep and having such an increase in sleepless people is becoming a huge problem. We need to understand why we have such a global problem and it all starts by understanding how we used to live. Hunter-gatherers had quite a different sleep schedules as we modern humans do. This of course has much to do with the more dangerous environment that we do, but it doesn't seem to cause any health issues. In fact, these tribes had apparently very healthy brains and the healthiest hearts ever recorded. They had the least amount of plaque ever documented amongst any population seen in the world. When interviewed, they explained that they never slept well because they had to defend their women and their tribe from various animals. These humans from any region had to have their share of sleepless nights. Also this idea of losing sleep on purpose to go to a party or do some work is not new because tribes voluntarily lost sleep to go hunting. Yet, it didn't seem to cause any health issues. This can make us wonder about whether we really need 8 hours of sleep or more, like everyone seems to suggest. For most adults, it's somewhere between 6 and 8 hours. Well, I think somewhere between 7 to 9 is what we recommend. But people that tell me that I should get 8 hours of sleep, it's like, it, it's... I, I mean, I, I get it, and you know, they may be right, but they may be very wrong. Every tribe recorder slept on average 5, 6 or 7 hours with none of them going past 8 hours. The Tsimane, for example, had on average 7 hours and 41 minutes in bed, meaning that their sleeping time was even lower than that. Humans before the invention of the light bulb also adopted a biphasic sleep schedule or a polyphasic sleep schedule. This biphasic sleep was divided into the first sleep and the second sleep. In this way, they slept 4 hours, woke up for 1 to 3 hours, and then went back to bed for 4 hours. Dr. A. a. Roger Eckrich found over 500 references of interrupted sleep patterns, from prayer books to poems to even a French doctor from the 16th century encouraging couples to conceive during that time of wakefulness, since they were more energized, could have more enjoyment, and would do it better. The earliest reference that I've discovered is in uh, Homer's Odyssey. Virgil, similar Similarly refers to a first sleep and the interval of wakefulness that followed it in the Aeneid. Uh, it references uh, exist in, that I have found in as many as 15 foreign languages, all directly translatable into first and second sleep when transformed into English. Households, when they awakened at night, did... Uh, a number of uh, mundane chores that required a little uh, artificial illumination or skill. Uh, they prayed, they meditated, they made love. Uh, a 16th century French physician was of the opinion that couples who wish to conceive children uh, should, after their first sleep, uh, engage in uh, connubial bliss 
uh, when, as he put it, they enjoy it more and do it better. This biphasic sleep schedule was very common and this period of wakefulness was usually used to pray, ride, visit neighbors and many more things. Biphasic sleep wasn't the only way of course. Polyphasic sleep was also a thing and it's actually still a thing since some people still apply it. But our modern day sleep schedule is mostly monophasic for some reason compared to previously. A study showed why this is. They put 7 men for 14 hours a day in darkness to mimic the natural sunlight pattern and they did this for a month. Slowly they started to realize that these men switched from having a monophasic sleep to a biphasic sleep of 4 hours, 1-3 to three hours of wakefulness and then another 4 hours of sleep. There's a correlation between the increase in unnatural light and our monophasic sleep which is unnatural compared to hunter gatherers. Because of this absence of light bulbs and unnatural lights at night, humans had a much more natural sleep pattern and quality of sleep. The reason these tribes only needed 5, 6 or 7 hours of sleep on average is simply because their sleep quality was much higher and they didn't need sleep any any longer. Compare this to our way of sleeping which needs to be longer for us to function properly because our sleep quality has been decreasing. Lots of people are sleep deprived first because sleep quality decreases which means we have to sleep more hours but also because people misunderstand 8 hours in bed doesn't mean 8 hours of sleep. Any sleep tracking device will show you this. An 80% sleep efficiency scores requires you to be 10 hours in bed to have 8 hours of sleep. Simply put, people don't have the quality of sleep anymore and they also lack the hours of sleep needed. But this lack of hours of sleep is not only caused by your misunderstandings. In February 2004, Facebook was launched. This was the most popular social medium at the time and would then lead to a future no one ever thought possible. Billions of people connecting with each other through a computer screen and being able to maintain virtual relationships from anywhere in the world. Having seen Facebook's success, many saw an opportunity to take this idea and make it better. Soon we saw the rise of many more social media platforms including Instagram in 2010, YouTube in 2005 and later TikTok in 2016. This rise in social media brought, as we know, many more problems than benefits and this includes our ever increasing addiction to those apps. TikTok was the one taken over in no time, with a majority of about 60% of users being between the ages of 16 to 24. This is without counting old people nowadays using the app under the age of 16. This ever-increasing addiction to social media platforms in general is leading people to spend more and more time on them, not being able to quit and therefore keeping this up into the night. We have a generation of young people having lowered quality sleep, combined with multiple addictions keeping them on screens for longer and longer, ultimately ruining their sleep, which at that age is absolutely necessary. Social media and modern technology are a huge issue in regards to longevity and quality of sleep. This then leads not only kids and adolescents but also adults to have completely uncontrolled sleep schedules, which leaves them there hyper-stimulated and unable to fall asleep. Absolutely. You know, we used to say, where are your kids? You know, they're worried about them being out in the neighborhood. Nowadays, the electronics, they're socially connected, so they're texting till all hours of the night, and those electronics will keep the brain engaged as well as the light can can limit the release of melatonin that helps you transition into sleep. So the electronics are a problem, so you want to get them out of the bedroom if you can. Adults then face an entire new problem, which then leaves them even more sleepless. See, our lives are extremely dependent on the money we make. These resources are necessary for our survival since it gives us access to food, water, shelter, electricity, gas, warmth, clothing, medical care and every other necessary part of our lives. Our lives are completely dependent and controlled by this currency and without access to it, we and our families perish. With an overwhelming majority of the population having a 9 to 5 and having their whole lives dependent on how well they perform and their boss's mood, keeping this in mind is an absolute nightmare. A part of the population not having more than one income stream, meaning that a simple day of coming late to work and your family could be out on the streets. A recession coming out of nowhere and you can't access gas and electricity anymore. This thought of your whole life being dependent on such a fragile factor is daunting. What's amazing about the human brain and body is that such a simple thought can lead to a complete physiological change. Just a simple non-existing thing changing our internal state completely. Having a thought about our whole lives crashing around us because of one small factor will lead to us having one unique reaction stress and anxiety. Since our performance in life and at work is highly dependent on how well we sleep, we automatically make this a priority in our minds and since we already spent this massive part of the evening and night scrolling through useless content, this anxiety will increase massively. The thought of us not being able to perform as well and risking our single income to support our lives is going to lead us having even more stress and less sleep. Adolescents and kids will be much less affected by this increasing stress but they will still miss a couple hours of highly needed sleep. 
teenagers as no need more sleep than adults so although they're not affected by stress as much they still miss hours of valuable sleep due to this addiction to technology but to understand teenager sleep deficiency better we need to dive deeper into something more profound Our society has changed quite a lot. When you compare our social norms to before, one major change is something we call open-mindedness. Some things are normalized and those things are mostly bad habits and here's the problem. Because when you allow more and more bad habits to happen, it creates weak people. The problem we have with this rejection of certain rules and allowing more and more is that a small part of this rejection may lead to better things, but the majority of this rejection is just simply leading to degeneracy. Allow sex before marriage and you end up with male and female whores everywhere. Allow alcohol and you get violence, deaths and brain degeneration. The reason all this was normalized is because it all feels good in the moment, but slowly poisons you in the long run. This is where the distinction between instant gratification and delayed gratification comes in. What the majority of this open-mindedness was about was eliminating the obligation to make you uncomfortable in the moment but would have made your life better in the long run and led place to the instant pleasures of life that slowly destroy you in the long run. This is what religion was all about. Do the hard things now and enjoy a good life after. There is a specific reason why these things are not allowed. One major problem is that these habits lead to people having worse and worse mental health. It's hard to find someone that has great mental health in such an environment and this is the point I want to come at. Having good mental health and being mentally stable might not seem that important at first when it comes to sleep but having bad mental health is an absolute killer of sleep. This mental state will raise your anxiety, stress and will keep you tossing and turning in your bed. This mental health doesn't only come from the bad habits you have but also from your life conditions and life factors like your unfulfilling job, unpleasant wife or ungrateful kids. This also includes diet and exercise regime. Eating a healthy balanced diet that includes lean proteins, whole grains, fruits and just healthy foods in general can help promote sleep by providing nutrients that support healthy sleep and a stable blood sugar level. Exercise can also have a positive impact on sleep quality and duration. It can help to regulate the body's circadian rhythm. Research has shown that moderate intensity exercise such as brisk walking or cycling can help people fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. It has also been found to reduce symptoms of sleep disorders such as insomnia and sleep apnea. So having your diet and exercise routine in place is needed for everyone. This then also leads to people having better mental health but what we see happening now especially in western countries is that a lot of people just don't have this healthy diet and exercise in place including teenagers and kids. Our modern life conditions are destroying our sleep. Whether it's our diet, job, addictions or mental health, almost every little part of our modern life has some form of cause in our lessened sleep quality and longevity. It's no wonder why our sleep is so messed up compared to generations before us and especially compared to our hunter-gatherer brothers.